Golly, that's good. I cracked myself up. I still haven't found my first Blanton's. <laughs> that's different. I really like that. They're like together, like peas and carrots. That's funny. Sometimes accidents are good things. Peshods or pechods or pecha. <laughs> this is not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so you've gotten the skinny on this. Let's do, let's do the thing. Let's do the thing. Here we go. <laughs> We're doing the thing. You know, the thing. <laughs> so some of you may know that I'm a big watcher of The Chosen. And um, they, they, have, they have actually moved their season finale, the, the episode eight, to Sunday. Because tomorrow night would have been it. But there's a presidential debate tomorrow night. You know, the thing! <laughs> so they, they moved it to Sunday so they didn't get in the way of people who want to watch the debate. I thought that was cool. Hey, doing well, relaxing at the lake. Ah, oh, that, sounds, that sounds nice. Um, we got some pretty heavy-duty storms that went through the last couple of days. Didn't dump a lot of rain, but it was nice and consistent. And some big boomers, which I always like. The nose on this is, is nice. So I, I got just a, a whiff of it earlier today when I poured it out and then poured it back in to give it a chance to open up a little bit. And it's going to sit there open. I poured it well before the broadcast started tonight. And uh, yeah, that nose is nice. That sweetness of that corn. Now it doesn't have any rye and it doesn't have any uh, wheat in it. It's barley, three different types of barley. 25%. Now, normally barley is going to give you the notes of nut, nuts, um, sometimes some fruits. Um, that's, and the rye is going to give you spice, and that's not in here. So uh, I'm going to see what I can give you on the nose as far as uh, actual notes here. It's got a sweetness to it. I'm getting that vanilla. Boy, there is a fruit forward there. There's something. I've got a little strawberry. That's... That's, that's unique. That doesn't happen. It's not a strong nose, but it's a nice nose. I'm not getting anything floral off of it. It's uh, maybe a little brown sugar. Definitely some cinnamon, but that's a typical note, right? Um... It's not particularly oaky, but I do get a little of that, a little of that wood. Getting some of that corn sweetness for sure. I think I'm going to like this. I don't know. We'll see. The nose and the, and the palate could be completely different, but let's, let's find out. Cheers. I like this one. Oh, okay. It's a 111 proof. And it doesn't drink. Now, I've been doing the high proof thing all month, so maybe I'm just used to it. And I've been drinking. Last night, I did a bottle kill of the old Ezra 7. We tested that a while back. Um, and I, I finally killed that one. But um, And I do like everything Ezra Brooks. I haven't had an Ezra Brooks product that I, that I haven't liked yet. Anyway... Um, so, huh. that's interesting. I, I'm, I'm going through the gamut of what's happening on the palate and then what's happening in the finish. If you like mellow corn, and Kevin's probably on the other side of this going, no, don't say that, don't say it, I know it, la, 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 la. <laughs> That corn sweetness, a little bit of that silk taste, not a lot, is coming through on the finish. It's fascinating. So that corn sweetness is all through it. Let's go back to it. Um, the mouth feels very, very good. Um, it's, it's got a nice silkiness to it. Not so much buttery, but nice and silky. Uh, I love those unfiltered pores. I just do. I don't like the way they feel. And this one is one of them. Plus... Add to that that cask strength, and you're going to give a really nice mouthfeel to it. <laughs> hey, Kevin is watching. Hey, Kevin. So, yeah, are you, are you not... La, 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 la. Are, you're not going to... 
I don't, I don't think you would like this one, Kevin. I honestly don't think you'll like this one. Because if you like mellow corn and you like a little bit of that corn silk flavor that comes from mellow corn, there's just a slight, slight sense of that in the finish. And uh, I just, I, don't, I think you'll hate it. Because <laughs> you hate mellow corn. I like mellow corn. I don't love it. I like it. Uh, and with this, it's just fascinating. So, yeah. All right, let me get back into it here. Um, the bloom was... Uh, not bad. Uh, it had some nice um, uh, expression to it. it. Coated the tongue well. Uh, it does, again, I've been used to these high proof things. It doesn't drink like 111 proof to me. Uh, more like 105 or something like that. Just over. Just over. It's got a little bit of kick to it, but not a lot. All right. Okay. Yeah, really nice mouthfeel. Mm. You do get a little of that corn on the palate, but not nearly as much as on the finish. Um, there's a fruit note in there, but it's very, very subtle. Very, very subtle. I got strawberry on the nose, but what that is on the palate, boy, oh boy. I'm going through my fruits. <laughs> boy, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Melon, maybe. That's what comes to mind is like muskmelon. Um, now, I'm not telling you I taste muskmelon in it, but there's something in it that reminds me of, of how I react to the flavor of muskmelon. Or mushmelon or muskmelon or however you like to pronounce it. I, you know, Chris, I think it's a good pour too. I, um, um, and now I'm, I'm not getting as much of that corn silk on the finish as I did before. That was the first pour. Um, I, I, I like this one. I do. Michael's watching. Michael Bauer. Coachella Mike. Checking in. I beat you to it, didn't I? All right, let's get back to it. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Coachella Valley Mike, 109 degrees today. Ugh, yuck. No, thank you. All right, so you're going to love this. Um, boy, there's something right there, too. This thing has got flavor coming out every, whatever, <laughs> I don't know, molecule. Um, when I put it on the palate that time, I got vanilla bean ice cream. I, and you, every time I put it in my mouth, I've come up with something different as far as the flavor profile. And there was something else there on the finish that reminded me of like a black raspberry. Really quite good. Really quite good. And now I'm not getting that, that corn silk anymore. There's just so much happening in this glass. I would never have guessed that a Tennessee, well, it's not a Tennessee whiskey, that a whiskey from Tennessee would be this complex, especially without rye in it. Because rye, for me, is something that lends the, its, itself to complexity. A, a lot of the pours that I like have got a decent rye content, at least around 18%, um, or sometimes higher, right? So like one of them I really like is that Smoke Wagon Small Batch, and that's up into the 30% range. Of, uh, of rye. Now it's a different aging process and it's a different blending process, but but um, this has got enough going on that it changes every time I've tasted it. Um, it is fascinating. And uh, this, is a, this is a bottle I think you should get. Um, again, that first pour, you may get a little that corn silk thing that I was talking about with mellow corn, but then that, that goes away. And it just opens up into some other flavors that are just unusual. Lester's watching. Hey, Lester. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Talking about uh, the Chattanooga cask strength. It's 111 proof. Um, out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. I have been there. I have been there uh, last year. Last, last February of 23, I was there. Went right through it. They've got a really neat train museum there. I think that's I think what I'm thinking of is... 
Yeah, because Chattanooga, Chattanooga Choo Choo, right? Yeah, that's Chattanooga, Tennessee. I, yeah, I was there. I was there! I'm not lying! <laughs> we stopped at a restaurant. Next to the restaurant was, I think, this train museum of some sort. We didn't spend any time there, but it was neat to... I, and I don't like trains. I'm not a train fan. I'm not one of these guys that gets crazy over trains. I've got friends that do. I'm not one of those. I don't like trains. But it was still kind of cool to be next to the... whatever. I'm going to dig myself in a ditch with people who like trains. When I was a kid, we used to sit there and count the cars. It was a way to not hate the trains as much. I remember we got up to like 120-some cars one time. And we're like, 100, 101, 102. <laughs> That's what we did as kids. My mom was really good about finding ways to make mundane things fun. So... One of her, one of her, I was telling somebody the other day, one of her fav famous quotes. Uh, I'd, I'd be particularly nasty one day, and she'd look at me and she says, why don't you go to your room until you're ready to be around people? I still use that today, mostly on myself. I'm just going to go and be by myself until I'm ready to be around people. <laughs> All right, okay, let's get back to it. That time it hit me different again. I got a really nice caramel on the palate that time. Or caramel, if you have a degree. Okay. That finish, I'm, I'm letting that finish do its thing. See what I can pull out. Definitely a fruit note there. I don't know what that is. It could be a blackberry. It could actually be a blueberry. That's amazing. That's just amazing. I, this is a great pour. Uh, it's just so different and so unusual. And every time you, you take a swig of it, it's different. I love that. All right, let's put it on water and see what happens to it. See if I still love it on water. All right. I did make new ice spheres. But I did it last night, so I don't think they're going to be firmed up yet. So I'm recycling an ice sphere. I hope you're not mad about it. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris. All right. Glad you're here with us, Chris. Wait till you see what next week is going to be. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I have, I have, I could keep going forever on these cask strength pours. I got lots of them. I could just, I could, I, we talked about Ezra Brooks. I've got cask strength Ezra Brooks that I've still never opened. But I got one sitting next to me that we're going to do next week. And maybe I'll extend it and maybe I'll do a few more because, you know, I, I like this cask strength stuff. This is... One would argue, those of you who, who eat, who drink, drink, who drink the 90 proof, 100 proof stuff, seriously, I know this stuff can be bitey, but if you want the truest expression of what you're drinking without having it watered down a whole lot, you, you got to start getting into the cask strength stuff. Don't take big swigs of it like I do until you're used to it. Just sip it. The flavor difference is... Is incredible. The, the other one that they do is the 91 proof. This is 111. And that's Solera age, so it's not even genuine as far as, you know, it's aging. This is only a two year. I wonder what this would be like if it was a six year. Huh? I might like, I might not like it as much. I don't know. This is great. Did I add water? I don't think. Did I add water? I don't remember if I did it. I guess we'll find out. I don't know if I did, so I'm just going to put, like, I bought a bottle of Chatt Chattanooga. I did. I did. Thank you, Tyler. 
Bought a bottle of Chattanooga a while back, but have not cracked it open yet. Did you get the 91 or the 111? Because they're different. Uh, it, similar, but different. And, and I've heard nothing but good about this one. And there are people that I trust that advise me on things to buy. And they were not wrong about this one. This is really, really good. And it's the first thing I've had from Chattanooga. I might not, not even like the 91. I don't know. I don't know. All right, thank you, Tyler, for, for reminding me that I did put water on it. As a matter of fact, um, I did get uh, a little bit, actually, more flavor out of that. So. Mm. Now that mouthfeel with a little water on it is just a little more buttery. That just got better. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, the flavors grew. I can't tell you that I think they did anything different as far as opening up. You know, I'm getting more of this or I'm getting more of this. There's just more of it, right? So the flavor profile that I had was there and it was locked down. We've opened it up a little bit. Now there's just a flavor explosion, but it's still the same flavors that I had before. Now, will it change so much for me that I've added water on it? Eh, let's find out. <laughs> I'm not about to find it out. <laughs> I got invited to another McKenna party and I couldn't go. I'm just so heartbroken. Uh, a year ago, I went to a McKenna party. We had six different McKennas from the same year and they were all different. And it was just so much fun because they're all single barrels, right? The McKenna 10 year, they're all single barrels. So they're all just a little bit different and they're all aged 10 years, but they're all in different barrels. And uh, so I got a chance to do that last year and just had a blast. Great people. Well, I got invited again this year, like two days before it happened, which is great. I mean, it's fine. Thank you for the invite. I just couldn't make it. And uh, so I'm a little bit bummed that I didn't get to go, but I'm, I'm anxious to find out if the results were even somewhat similar to what they were a year ago. All right. Hey, Joanna's watching. How are you? How are you, Mama? <laughs> I hope all is well. All right. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this. It's really, really good. Even with a little bit of water. It, take, it took that bite down just a, just a little bit. But it just... It's like, it's like it took the flavors that I was finding and it put a magnifying glass on it. Just, just everywhere. Amazingly um, complex pour for what's in it. And the fact that there's no rye in it is, <laughs> and no wheat. Just, uh, it's, you can consider it a four grain, but 25% of that is, is a type of barley, three different types of barley, and corn, 75% corn. And by the way, I'm not getting any more of that corn silk at all. So if you're worried about it, Kevin, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to turn you off of it, but I'm not getting that at all anymore. That first pour, that first taste, yes. Since then, no. I'm not getting that corn silk anymore. Uh, it was just a first impression. So I am sure glad I dumped this out and dumped it back in. I'm so glad I gave it some air. Um, I'm so impressed with this bottle. I'm just wondering what it's going to do over time. I, I, I mentioned I finished that Old Ezra 7. And again, I've been doing the, the, the cask strength pours. And the Old Ezra 7 was just so mellow by the time I got back to it. And so full of flavor. And I was so happy <laughs> until I finished it. Then <laughs> it was so sad. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We're going to finish this. Mm-hmm. Stick around. I'm going to show you what's coming up. You want to know. You're going to want to know this. I promise you. I've left the cork. This is neat, by the way. This cork, this whole thing is cork. All of it. And you don't always, you don't always see that. I mean, like all the benchmark series, I still have them up here. You know, these are screw caps. Um, you know, the Boone County that we did, the top, eh, let me reach it. Eh. 
You know, <laughs> the top is not cork, but the cork goes down in it, you know, so it's attached. And that's fine, but this whole thing is cork and it's very lightweight. So I have respect for that. It's just different. I like that. Okay. All right. I'm starting to feel it. I have not eaten in a while. Went to the grocery store, got my groceries, had planned on making dinner, looked at the clock and went, <laughs> All right. Joanna, you can tell Paul that I did this for him. We're doing the finger stir. Can you imagine me doing this in a bar? I'm stirring it the Paul Smith way. This is famous. <laughs> uh, ha have, have Paul in your thoughts. They've got a newborn, and uh, he's not been sleeping much. So just kind of just kind of keep him in your head. Uh, are on Wednesdays now, not Thursdays. Okay, I'm glad you asked, Aaron. Hello, I'm glad you're here. So. Um, during the month of June, like every Thursday has something going on. I'm involved in a lot of stuff and for some reason, June was just stupid as far as the Thursday thing goes. So you tell me, uh, uh, sup, <laughs> same old, same old. Uh, so you, t Hey Dan, how are you? So you tell me, Mike, y'all. Collectively, tell me if you like Wednesdays better. Uh, if you like Wednesdays better, we'll make that the thing from from ever from now on. If you prefer Thursdays, I'll go back to Thursdays uh, in July. <laughs> I think <laughs> I have to look at the calendar and find out for sure. Um, but if you like Wednesdays, we'll do Wednesdays. If you like Thursdays, we'll do Thursdays. I want to do it at a time that you can join me because this is the fun part: is uh, being able to converse with you guys uh, and gals. So, uh, so yeah, you let me know what's best for you and that's what we'll do. Um, and maybe I'll make that a poll coming up on the page. So keep an eye on the, on the Facebook page and maybe I'll do a poll. So, so we know, um, uh, I, I know I don't want to do it on the weekends. Aaron, Aaron, who's with us now actually had a pretty good suggestion. He was the one that suggested that we do it earlier in the week, like Wednesday or Thursday. That way they might have an idea. Those who watch the show may have an idea of what they can drink on the weekend. Like, you know, if I, if I do Chattanooga 111, well, maybe you guys will go out and, and gals will go out and get the Chattanooga 111. That'll be your pour this weekend. So I thought it was a good idea. So that's why we do it the way we do it. All right. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm retired. Every day is Wednesday. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> Although sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> All right. So we did our finger stir. We got the ice on this. I didn't forget it this time, Tyler. I got the ice on it and I know it. I can see it. I can see it. All right. Mm. Still has decent flavor. The mouthfeel disappears on the ice. Uh, that that um, the ice just uh, it took a lot away from it. Um, the the flavor is still good. I I'm, I need to get into it and find out what I'm finding there as far as flavor goes. But there's no bite. Um, that complexity's gone. Uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of one note on ice. But you know me, I'm not a big fan of cooling down my bourbon. I just I'm not. Is this is it? Do they call this a bourbon? Or do they call it a whiskey? Straight bourbon whiskey. Okay, all right. So there you go. Definitely not a Tennessee whiskey. Doesn't have the mash bill for it anyway. So. It's really tough to find the notes when it's cold, um, but the fruit note is what I noticed first. Um, it's not citrusy. It's it's more of a um, savory style fruit, blackberries, blueberries. Um, it's not plum. I don't know what that fruit is, but it's got a fruity. Let's just say that. It's just a little bit fruity. I cannot identify the fruit that it is, but that's what I'm getting over ice. 
Let me keep going. Mm. That vanilla bean is still there. Uh, that caramel's still there, or caramel. Um, that's still there. So, I mean, it, it, it's got a decent flavor. Would I put this in a cocktail? Sure, why not? Um, if I can still taste it on ice, then you can still taste it in a cocktail. And with as unusual as this pour is, in all the right ways, I think this would be an interesting uh, Manhattan, or um, I'm sorry, Old Fashioned. And uh, I think this in particular, because I'm not getting a lot of oaky notes on it, might be really good in a smoked Old Fashioned. Yeah, <laughs> I had one of those recently. Uh, I didn't make it. Somebody else did at a bar. They did a really nice job. It was very, very good. We did that with the Jefferson's Twin Oak. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was so good. If you get the opportunity to pick up the Twin Oak, that's a good one. All right, so we've done it. You know what I feel about this. I like it. I like it a lot. But now let's talk about what we're going to do uh, next week. Is it this one? Is it this one? No, it's not that one. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> it's gonna be this one. Ah. <laughs> this is from High Bank Distillery in Columbus. Uh, as you may know, I was invited there a couple of weeks ago. Had a blast at their distillery. And I believe everything they offer is cask strength. I don't think they do any watering down of anything they've got. They've got one that was a, a really nice Cabernet. Uh, it was a double oaked and then Cabernet barrel. Beautiful finishing on that. The Cabernet was not really super uh, present. It just kind of, it was just kind of there a little bit, just enough. It was really, really well done. Um, but this one is their double, double oaked Whiskey War from High Bank Distillery in Columbus, Ohio. Um, this is cask strength. Uh, the number on this one, 116.30. Alcohol by volume, 58.15. Tyler says, I'm pretty basic when it comes to this stuff, so forgive me for what I'm going to ask. I had a bottle of Crown Royal bourbon mash that I really liked. Do you know of anything that's similar to that? So the bourbon mash that, that uh, Crown Royal came out with um, was, uh, was a bourbon mash bill. They could not call it bourbon because bourbon is, by law, uniquely American, whereas Crown Royal is Canadian. So if you're going to do a Canadian bourbon, that right there, that bourbon mash, is going to be the closest thing to bourbon that you're going to find anywhere else. Now, Canada and their whiskeys tends to go a little heavy on the rye side of things. So I would question what the rye part of that mash bill would be. And if it's a higher rye mash bill, you might try to find a bourbon that has a similar high rye mash bill. Um, trying to think. So that would have to be at least 51% corn, which Crown Royal products, I, I don't remember the mash bill on that, but I, do, I don't believe that all of them have that that 51% that corn uh, recommendation to be able to be able to call itself a bourbon mash. I would have to go back and look at the mash bill on Crown Royal. I don't remember what it is. I know it's higher in rye. And it's a Canadian rye, so it's going to have a different flavor to it. Um, and, the, and the one that you tasted is also going to be Canadian rye. So it could be a little bit woody, uh, a little bit earthy on that rye side of things, depending on the amount of it in the mash bill, the recipe. Um, so if you liked that one, I'm going to point you towards Michter's. Um, that's got a little on, it's a little on the sweet side of things. I think you'd like Michter's bourbon. Um, Buffalo Trace, I think would be right there. Um, it's not going to be the same as, not going to be the same as what you had. Uh, not Buffalo Trace for sure, but it's going to be a little bit closer to that sweetness that, uh, Crown Royal offers. Um, and... The other thing about Crown Royal is just about everything they put out is low proof. So, and I say low meaning the bottom proof, would, which would be 80 proof is like, I drink that as like Kool-Aid nowadays. A lot of the flavored stuff they put out, the, uh, the peach, uh, all the stuff they do, the vanilla, some of that stuff is 70 proof. So you're getting even further down. Um, but Crown Royal regular is 80 proof. I think that bourbon, that, that bourbon mash that you're talking about was 80 proof as well. 
So you're going to want to find things around that spot. You might look at the Evan Williams Black. Um, that may be really similar. Eh. Been a while since I've had Crown Royal, and I, I, I've only ever had the Bourbon Mesh one time. Um, uh, Evan Williams. Um, depending on the rye content, you might even look at the Old Granddad. Uh, not the Bonded, because that's 100 proof, but the, the regular one. Uh, just start just start looking around. The old granddad is not expensive. Uh, the Evan Williams black is not expensive. Those are things that you can try. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, the Evan Williams black, you can get in a pint. Just a little thing. Uh, so it gives you the opportunity to try that without having to spend a lot of money. And if you hate it, you hate it. I don't think you will if you like that mash bill that uh, Crown Royal put out. I hope that explained that a little bit. I hope I hope that helped. All right, so, but next week we're going to be doing this one, the Whiskey War Double Double Oaked. Uh, I tried this at the distillery, so it's not going to be normal where I've never tried it before. Um, but this, this is an incredible pour. This is really, really good, and I'm looking forward to tasting it with you. If you get the opportunity, head to Columbus and see if you can find some of this stuff. They have two locations in Columbus, so, you know, get on down there and see if you can get the, some of the Double Double. That's what, what we're doing next week, and we'll look forward to that. That helped. Thank you. I'll definitely try those out. That helped. I'm, that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to do. We will see you then, and then I will let you know what I'm going to do next week, whether or not we're going to continue this. I may just keep going with the barrel-proof pours, because I got a lot of them, and I've never opened them, some of them. It's time. It's time. So we may just extend it. Oh, by the way, speaking of new pours, i got to tell you about this. Angel's Envy has started to put out a series of pours that are not finished. So you know that they've got the, 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 um, the rye that's finished in rum barrels, and they've got the bourbon that's finished in port wine barrels, port sherry barrels. They're starting to put out stuff that is not finished, just whiskey, just bourbon. And they've just brought out one, I saw this the other day, they brought out a Angel's Envy triple oaked. So this is a double-double, which I think you could probably say is quadruple. I don't know. I, I got to ask him and find out. Um, but <laughs> Angel's Envy is doing some new stuff now, and it's exciting. Triple oaked? Come on! <laughs> Want? <laughs> so I just, I just wanted to throw that in there because I thought you needed to hear it. It's, 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 they're finally doing something different which is so exciting. They did the distillery, the distillery uh, 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 barrel proof and the single barrels. Uh, so that was new for them. And they did that last year and the year before. Uh, and now they're doing uh, just whiskey that isn't finished. How exciting. I, I've been wanting to taste their stuff. Their distillate without the finishing. So this may be worthy of a trip to Louisville to go to the distillery and get some of that, because ah, it sounds exciting. Sounds exciting to me. Uh, Tom's with us. Tom, we're just getting done. Tom, uh, hey, what's up? <laughs> we're done. <laughs> I will see you next week on Beautiful Bourbon. Uh, check us out uh, throughout the week. You know, we don't we don't live burbcast all the time, but we do other things sometimes. Uh, and, uh, if you get the opportunity, there's a couple of groups, uh, if you're in Northwest Ohio, and I mean, if you are in Northwest Ohio, there's the Northwest Ohio Bourbon Enthusiast, and you look at that group, and of course the Maumee Valley Whiskey Society, who I am very, very happy with. Uh, I'm, I love being a member of both of those. Um, but I got to do that barrel pick two weeks ago. It was fantastic. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we will see you, uh, next Wednesday. Again, and let me know Wednesday, Thursday. And I'll, like I said, I'll probably do a poll, but um, next Wednesday will be this one, the Double Double Oaked from High Bank Distillery, Whiskey War, which you know. Uh, you, if you go back and watch the other one I did, I love Whiskey War. It's a really good pour. Excellent pour. I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.